Hi again, this is Andy, K4GKP, and welcome back to the Ham Whisper and Lesson 23 in the General Class Operator Element 3 exam. In this lesson, we go over the G6A questions. The G6A questions go over a little bit more about resistors, capacitors, and inductors, and let's get started. What will happen to the resistance if the temperature of a carbon resistor is increased? Well, the answer is it, it depends. It, it will change depending on the resistor's temperature coefficient rating. So what you need to know is that how well resistors resist the flow of current really depends on the temperature of the resistor. And there's two basic categories of temperature coefficient that you need to know for the exam. That's tempco is, is another way of saying that. And those ratings are positive and negative. A positive tempco means as the temperature increases, the resistance increases. A negative tempco is the opposite, which means that as the temperature increases, the resistance decreases. So the TEMCO is based on the material and some other stuff the resistor is made of, but what you need to know for this exam is that resistors, based on their temperature, can resist at different levels, and there's a rating called a temperature coefficient, which will let you know whether it increases resistance with temperature or decreases resistance with increased temperature. What type of capacitor is often used in power supply circuits to filter the rectified AC? This is an electrolytic capacitor. Electrolytic capacitors are essentially several layers of conductive material that's kind of rolled up like a like a sweet roll almost into a nice small package and the conductive material is wetted with a chemical that reacts with the current. Now because of this wetting it's very very the capacitor is polarized which means that it will only allow current in one direction. So the leads are specifically marked positive and negative and if the current is reversed on an electrolytic capacitor, it could explode. So the advantage of electrolytic capacitors is that they have a very high level of capacitance in a very small package. So electrolytic capacitors are often used in power supply circuits to help filter the rectified AC. Which of the following is the primary advantage of ceramic capacitors? Well, the primary advantage is that they're cheap. They're comparatively low cost compared to other uh, capacitors. Um, and that's about the only advantage. They're small, uh, basically two plates with a piece of ceramic insulating the two plates. And one of the problems is that they're very temperature sensitive. So, you know, you can get a little bit of variance in capacitance with, with the temperature. But the primary advantage of ceramic cap capacitors is that they're comparatively low cost. Which of the following is an advantage of an electrolytic capacitor? The advantage is they have high capacitance for given volume. So there, there are a lot of capacitance in a small package. And we went over that in the first question. Uh, they're often used in power supplies and whatnot. So electrolytic capacitors have a relatively high capacitance for their size. Which of the following is one effect of lead inductance in a capacitor used at VHF frequencies and above? Well, the effect of capacitance may be reduced. And what this question is talking about is the actual leads on the capacitor can produce a magnetic field or inductance at higher frequencies. So the two little wires coming out of the capacitor uh, at higher frequencies basically act as almost like an inductor. Now at lower frequencies this isn't a big deal, but when you start increasing the frequency to VHF and higher, the, uh, reduct the inductive reactance or the resistance to the flow of current created by those two leads on the capacitor can actually render the capacitor useless. So the effective capacitance may be reduced by the capacitor's leads. So that's one effect. What is the main disadvantage of using a conventional wire wound resistor in a resonant circuit? Well, the, the resistor's inductance could detune the circuit. And this kind of builds off the previous question in that how one component may inadvertently act like another component. So all material has some level of resistance, no matter how good of a conductor it is. And one of the ways to kind of control the resistance in the circuit is to basically add length to a piece of wire. So the longer the wire, you know, the longer, the, the, the higher the resistance. So a, wired round, a wire wound resistor works kind of like this. And it's basically a, a wire of a certain material wrapped around a ceramic core. Now the problem is a, a wire wound resistor are essentially coils of wire, which is also how, w what an inductor is. So the addition of this magnetic field in this resistor can actually detune the circuit. What is an advantage of using a ferrite core with a toroidal inductor? 
The answer is large values of inductance may be obtained, the magnetic properties of the core may be optimized for a specific range of frequencies, and most of the magnetic field is contained in the core. And as you can probably tell by the length of the answer, this is an all of the above uh, question. Now, toroidal inductors are basically coils of, wrap, of wire wrapped around a, tor a toroid core, which looks like a metal donut, a little tiny metal donut. Now, toroidal inductors are often used in radio equipment because they can have a high inductance for relatively small size. They're very stable, and the magnetic field is contained inside the core, which prevents interference with other components in the circuit. So, remember, large values of inductance may be obtained, the magnetic properties of the core may be optimized for a specific range of frequencies, and most of the magnetic field is contained in the core. How should two solenoid inductors be placed so as to minimize their mutual inductance? Now, w with their winding axes at right angles to each other, so basically perpendicular to each other. So solenoid inductors are just straight coils of wire that may or may not have a, a solid core, and they, they, look, they look just like springs. Now, the magnetic fields associated with solenoid inductors extend outside of the coil. So if two are placed side by side with each other, the magnetic fields can interfere with each other um, which is the mutual inductance like we talked about in transformers. And sometimes this is encouraged like in a transformer, but when you don't want to um, have mutual inductance, it's, it's pretty much discouraged. So to, to minimize interference between the two solenoid inductors, they need to be placed basically at right angles to each other. So the polarity of the magnetic fields are perpendicular to each other. So like I said, at right, right angles. Why might it be important to minimize mutual inductance between two inductors? and the answer is to reduce or eliminate unwanted coupling. So th this goes back to the last question. The magnetic fields of inductors can interfere with each other. So this coupling can cause all sorts of issues between circuits unless you want it to happen, and that's a whole different story. But you want to minimize that to reduce the eliminate or eliminate unwanted coupling. What is an effect of inter-turn capacitance in an inductor? The inductor may become self-resonant at some frequencies. And this goes back to sort of like the leads on a capacitor causing unintentional inductance. The coils on an inductor can cause unintentional capacitance. And the effect of inter-turn capacitance increases with frequency. So remember that a, a resonant circuit essentially consists of a capacitor and inductor kicking back and forth, kicking energy back and forth to each other. So when the when inter-turn capacitance occurs in an inductor, it can set up a, like a little mini oscillator or a little mini resonant circuit. So that's why that, that's one of the effects of inter-turn capacitance in an inductor. What is the common name for capacitor connected across a transformer secondary that is used to absorb transient voltage spikes? The answer is suppressor capitor and this is a type of capacitor which absorbs or su suppresses voltage spikes. And this makes the most sense of the possible answers. And if you think surge per suppressor, that's kind of what we're talking about here. So the common name for a capacitor connected across a transformer secondary that is used to absorb transient voltage spikes is a suppressor capacitor. What is the common name for an inductor used to help smooth the DC output from the rectifier in a conventional power supply? Now this is a filter choke. And this may be a one you need to memorize. So a, a filter choke is an inductor which filters out small spikes or ripples in DC current coming from a power supply. So like I said, this one might be a definition to memorize, but a filter choke is the common name for an inductor used to help smooth the DC output from the rectifier in a conventional power supply. What type of component is a thermistor? Well, it's a device having a controlled change in resistance with temperature variations. So more specifically, a thermistor, a thermistor is a type of resistor. And as we talked about earlier with temperature coefficients, resistance can vary with the temperature of the resistor. So a thermistor has been precisely tested so resistance levels at certain temperatures are, are known. So if a thermistor is providing resistance of X ohms, then you know the temperature is Y degrees. And you can kind of almost use these as a thermostat uh, of some sort. So a device having a controlled change in resistance with temperature variations is a thermistor. And it's time for the G6A quiz. So take out a piece of paper and a pencil in number 1 through 13. When you're done with the quiz, you can find the answers at hamwhisper.com under the exam answers page. Just look for the G6A section. So I'm going to go through the questions pretty quick. If you need more time, pause the video and take all the time you need. 
So let's get started. Question 1. What will happen to the resistance if the temperature of a carbon resistor is increased? A. It will increase by 20% for every 10 degrees centigrade. B. It will stay the same. C. It will change depending on the resistor's temperature coefficient rating. Or D. It will become time dependent. Question 2. What type of capacitor is often used in power supply circuits to filter the rectified AC? A. Disc ceramic. B. Vacuum variable. C. Mica or D. Electrolytic. Question 3. Which of the following is the primary advantage of ceramic capacitors? A. Tight tolerance. B. High stability. C. High capacitance for given volume. Or D. Comparatively low cost. Question 4. Which of the following is an advantage of an electrolytic capacitor? A. Tight tolerance. B. Non-polarized. C. High capacitance for given volume. Or D. Inexpensive RF capacitor. Question 5. Which of the following is one effect of lead inductance in a capacitor used at VHF and above? A. Effective capacitance may be reduced. B. Voltage rating may be reduced. C. ESR may be reduced, or D, the polarity of the capacitor might become reversed. Question 6. What is the main disadvantage of using a conventional wire wound resistor in a resonant circuit? A, the resistor's tolerance value would not be adequate for such a circuit. B, the resistor's inductance could detune, could detune the circuit. C, the resistor could overheat, or D, the resistor's internal capacitance would detune the circuit. Question 7. What is an advantage of using a ferrite core with a toroidal inductor? A. Large values of inductance may be obtained. B. The magnetic properties of the core may be optimized for a specific range of frequencies. C. Most of the magnetic field is contained in the core. Or D. All of these choices are correct. Question 8. How should two solenoid inductors be placed so as to minimize their mutual inductance? A. In line with their winding axis. B. With their winding axes parallel to each other. C. With their winding axes at right angles to each other. Or D. Within the same shielded enclosure. Question 9. Why might it be important to minimize the mutual inductance between two inductors? A. To increase the energy transfer between both circuits. B. To reduce or eliminate unwanted coupling. C. To reduce conducted emissions. Or D. To increase the self-resonant frequency of both inductors. Question 10. What is an effect of inter-turn capacitance on, in an inductor? A. The magnetic field may become inverted. B. The inductor may become self-resonant in some frequencies. C. The permeability will increase. Or D. The voltage rating may be exceeded. Question 11. What is the common name for a capacitor connected across a transformer secondary that is used to absorb transient voltage spikes? A. Clipper capacitor. B. Trimmer capacitor, C. Feedback capacitor, or D. Suppressor capacitor. Question 12. What is the common name for an inductor used to help smooth the DC output from the rectifier in a conventional power supply? A. Back EMF choke, B. Repulsion coil, C. Charging inductor, or D. Filter choke. And question 13. What type of component is a thermistor? A. A resistor that is resistant to changes in value with temperature variations. B. A device having a controlled change in resistance with temperature variations. C. A special type of transistor for use at very cold temperatures. Or D. A capacitor that changes value with temperature. And that is it for Lesson 23 and the G6A quiz. So now that you know the quiz, go to hamwhisper.com, check your answers under the exam answers page under the G6A section of questions. And until next time in Lesson 24, this is Andy, KE4GKP, saying 73, and I hope to hear you on the air soon.